All right, in this video, I'm going to prove that the alternating harmonic series converges to the natural logarithm of 2. So the basic idea to prove this is we're going to relate the alternating harmonic series to the harmonic series by induction. We'll prove that. And then we're going to use that result about Euler's constant to show the result we want. So I'm not going to reprove everything about Euler's constant. You can check out that video if you want to see that information. Likewise, too, again, we're going to do stuff by induction. If you've forgotten proof by induction, I definitely have quite a few videos um, on, on induction as well. All right, so again, it's going to be a few minutes because I want to show some extra steps just to make sure that everything hopefully is clear. So I'm going to let, start off, I'm going to let h sub n be the first n terms of the harmonic series. So 1 plus a half plus a third plus dot 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 plus 1 over n. I'm going to let s sub n be the same thing except for we're going to use the alternating harmonic series. So 1 minus um, a half plus a third minus a fourth plus dot dot dot. I'm going to put a little plus minus here. It's going to be 1 over n. It's going to be uh, positive if we go out an odd number of terms. It'll be negative if we have an even number of terms. So, okay, it just depends on how many terms we go out, whether this is going to be positive or negative. But you get the idea. It's going to be the first n terms of the alternating harmonic series. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to relate the, you know, the harmonic series to the alternating harmonic series by making an observation. And, you know, it's not completely shocking, right, that you should be able to maybe relate these two together. I mean, it's the, the terms are almost the same, except for some are positive and some are negative. So we're going to actually show that the following holds. We're going to show that we can take S sub 2n. So if we take the first 2n terms of the alternating harmonic series, we can actually write that in terms of the harmonic series as follows. It's going to turn out that h of 2n minus h of n, that's going to equal s sub 2n. So I'm going to do a little quick example maybe to convince you this is correct, just to give you some intuition. So suppose we let n equal 3. Well, we would have 2 times 3, which would be 6. So s sub 6, we would have 1 minus a half plus a third minus a fourth plus a fifth minus a sixth. Well, again, 2 times 3, we would have h sub 6. So that's 1 plus a half plus a third plus a fourth plus a fifth plus a sixth. h sub 3 would just be 1 plus a half plus a third. So notice if we do h sub 6 minus h sub 3, well, one, the ones would cancel, the halves would cancel, the thirds would cancel. We would be left with 1 fourth plus 1 fifth plus 1 sixth. Is that what s sub 6 actually equals? Well, yeah, it is. Because notice if you do 1 minus a half minus a fourth, that gives us positive 1 fourth. Our positive 1 fifth is already accounted for. And then if we do positive 1 third minus 1 sixth, we get positive 1 sixth. So yeah, um, h sub 6 minus h sub 3 does equal s sub 6. So just to maybe convince you that that's correct. So again, this is a clever observation, you know. Um, but again, to me, it would seem reasonable to maybe try to do something like this. You know, it seems like a logical place to start. I mean, to try to relate this alternating harmonic series to the harmonic series. I mean, the terms are, again, are close enough to, to where it doesn't seem completely crazy that that could happen. Okay, so now we're going to do some induction. So we're going to let P of N be the proposition We're going to let that be the proposition that s sub 2n equals h sub 2n minus h sub n. I think I'm going to start stop saying sub. So I'm going to say s sub 2n, h of 2n minus h of, h of n. It's easier to say. Okay, so let's prove the base step here, p1. So p1 would be the statement. Okay, so we would have s sub 2 equals h sub 2 minus h of 1. Is that true? Well, the first two terms of the alternating harmonic series, that would be 1 minus a half. Uh, h of 2, that would be 1 plus a half. We subtract away just the first term of the harmonic series, which would be 1. Well, 1 minus a half is a half on the right side. The 1's would cancel. You'd be left with 1 half. So definitely, uh, P of 1 is, in fact, a true statement. 
So now we're going to do the induction uh, step. We're going to suppose that P of n is true. And we want to show that P of n plus 1 is also true. Okay, so that is, we have to show that S of 2 multiplied by the quantity n plus 1, that equals H of the quantity 2, excuse me, 2 times the quantity n plus 1 minus H of n plus 1. All right. Having fun. I think this is interesting. I like it. Okay, so again, we could write this as h. If you distribute, that will be 2n plus 2 minus h of n plus 1. Okay, so this says we're going to add up the first 2n plus 2 terms of the harmonic series. Well, that means we're adding up the first 2n terms plus the one after that and the one after that. So the one after 2n will be 2n plus 1, and the one after that would be 2n plus 2. So this is, all of this represents h sub 2n plus 2 minus, okay, now we have to add up or subtract away after we add up the first n plus 1 terms. Well, that would be the first n terms of the harmonic series. Uh, and then we would have the next one, which would be n plus 1. So now I'm just going to simplify this a little bit and rearrange things. So we have h of 2n minus h of n plus 1 over 2n plus 1 plus 1 over 2n plus 2. Well, we would have minus 1 over 2n plus 1. I'm going to go ahead and get common denominators to do some arithmetic. Notice we've got 2n plus 2 here. If I multiply top and bottom of this uh, very last term by 2, I would have 2 over 2n plus 2. Okay, so by our assumption, this equals S sub 2n. Then we would have plus 1 over 2n plus 1. And then we would have minus 1 over 2n plus 2. Notice that 2 times n, that's going to be an even number. So 2n plus 1 is going to be odd. And notice for the alternating harmonic series, the odd terms, um, the odd terms are always going to be positive. So this does, in fact, equal S sub 2n plus 2, which is S sub 2 multiplied by n plus 1. Okay, so now we've got that statement being true. Again, I'm just making sure because, again, this term has to be odd by assumption. And again, for odd terms for the alternating harmonic series, they have to be positive. So that's why I'm just pointing out that the signs are, in fact, correct. Okay, so now we've got that. So now we've shown this relationship that we wanted to. So we've managed to relate the alternating harmonic series to the harmonic series. And this is good. Now we're going to bring in a result about Euler's constant. Okay, so we've seen, okay, so we had this, uh, right, remember in the Euler's constant video, we looked at basically the harmonic series, but then we subtracted away the natural logarithm of n. Okay, so it was almost the harmonic series, but we were subtracting away this natural logarithm of n. And we saw, we proved, so we've seen, that T sub n approaches that Euler constant as n goes to infinity. We justified that. Okay, so notice again, we said that this is the harmonic series, these first n terms, or I should say that, you know, the first n terms of the harmonic series. So likewise, we've seen that H sub n minus the natural logarithm of n, that approaches that number, the Euler constant, as n goes to infinity the same thing, right? T sub n is the same thing as h sub n minus the natural logarithm of n. Likewise, we can just replace n with 2n. So we would have that h sub 2n minus the natural logarithm of 2n. That approaches that Euler constant as n goes to infinity. 
Okay, so now we're starting starting to get close. Okay, so so we've got the s sub two n that equals h sub two n minus h sub n. Now the thing is, notice these res results involve the natural log natural logarithm of two n and the natural logarithm of n. So I'm going to make those appear so that I can use this result, and I'm going to do it as follows. I'm just going to say this is h sub 2n minus h sub n minus the natural logarithm of 2n plus the natural logarithm of 2n plus the natural logarithm of n minus the natural logarithm of n. Okay, so I'm just basically adding and subtracting the natural logarithm of 2n. I'm adding and subtracting the natural logarithm of n. So I'm going to uh, regroup this to make you know, these two expressions appear. So I've got h sub 2n um, minus the natural logarithm of 2n. So that would take care of that term and that term. Minus, I'm going to use, let's see, so I'm going to use h sub n. And then, so I'm just factoring out the negatives. So I would have minus the natural logarithm of n. And what are we left with? We're left with a positive natural logarithm of 2n minus the natural logarithm of n. Okay, so again, this is s sub 2n. Well, now I'm just going to take the limit of both sides of this. Okay, so if I take the limit of both sides, okay, I'm not, well, yeah, I guess let's rewrite it. So let's, let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub 2n. That means we're taking the limit of this right side. The limit as n goes to infinity of all this stuff. So h sub 2n minus the natural logarithm of 2n minus the net, or excuse me, h sub n minus the natural logarithm of n plus the natural logarithm of 2n minus the natural logarithm of n. So now we can use our result that we have up here, right, about Euler's constant. We know that h sub 2n minus the natural logarithm of n, that's going to approach this Euler constant. Okay, so that just approaches the Euler constant. Likewise, this uh, h, sub, or h sub n minus the natural logarithm of n, that's also going to approach the Euler constant. Oh, no, we're getting close plus the natural logarithm of 2n minus the natural logarithm of, oh no, I wrote a 2, this should be an n, this should be an n. Am I crazy? Yes, sorry. That should be the natural logarithm of n. I had it back there and I wrote a 2. Sorry about that. So, okay, the natural logarithm of 2n minus the natural logarithm of n. Well, hey, those terms are just going to cancel because, again, we said the Euler constant is a finite number. So we've got the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, the natural logarithm of 2n, we could write that as the natural logarithm of, um, how do I want to write this, of uh, 2 times n minus the natural logarithm of n. I'm getting too excited here. We've got the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, using properties of logarithms, this is the natural logarithm of 2 plus the natural logarithm of n. I'm just breaking up this first natural logarithm. You know, again, products become addition. Minus the natural logarithm of n. Hey, lo and behold, the natural logarithm of n, those are going to cancel out. I'm left with the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural logarithm of 2, which is just going to equal the natural logarithm of 2. And there we have it, proof complete. So, all right, kind of interesting to me. The alternating harmonic series does converge, and it converge, converges to the natural logarithm of 2. So, okay, I hope this video was interesting to you. Uh, I know some people definitely asked about it. So definitely using a couple results, the one about Euler's constant. So feel free to, to check that result out as well if you want to see it because um, we definitely proved it. And also, if you need some help, more help on proof by induction, check out some of those videos as well.